I wrote this minutes after President Biden endorsed Kamala Harris as the presidential candidate of the Democratic Party of the great United States of America. <laughs> What's a, whatever is left of it. My name is Sam Baklin. I'm a columnist in Brussels Morning, and here is what I had to say. Trump, Trump is now a weaker candidate than he was only a week ago. He is way older than Kamala Harris, and he is a convicted felon, to her, ex-prosecutor. Money is flowing into democratic coffers at an unprecedented pace. The party is newly energized. Should Trump be defeated at the polls, Trump's only hope to secure a win is through the slavish and cynical Supreme Court of the United States. The GOP, the Republican Party, have done it before, with Bush versus Gore. The Electoral College is built to ignore the popular vote. It is innately an anti-democratic institution. Add to it an anti-democratic Supreme Court, and the presidency is Trump's. That is, of course, discounting the possibility of civil war on American streets with Trump's militias against everybody else. <laughs> Further down the road, Trump may also seek to either abolish term limits or to designate one of his sons as an heir in the equivalent of a dynastic monarchy. Next move in the hostile takeover. The Supreme Court may collude with Trump to deny the Democrats a Harris ticket in several states, as well as access to any and all funds collected by the party hitherto. There is one more legal move, fraud. The GOP can sue for having been defrauded by the Democrats. They can also claim that donors and voters in the primaries have been swindled. Lower MAGA courts and the Supreme Court will have no trouble to play ball with this. This is both unprecedented and runs against the High Court's own president, Trump versus Anderson. But this kangaroo Supreme Court maintains a very conflicted relationship with precedents and with the truth. It will do what's good for Trump, period. Some predict that all hell will break loose should this transpire. It won't. Study the history of the Communist Party in the Weimar Republic. The Communists and Socialists in the Weimar Republic in Germany were far stronger than the Democrats are now in the United States. When Hitler was appointed dictator by the legislature, in the March 1933 Enabling Act, they just went along with it, the communists and the socialists. This pattern has occurred all over the world in the wake of an authoritarian takeover. People just give up. When democracy is defeated, people just give up. They move on, accepting the inevitability of a Hitler, or an Orban, or a Netanyahu, or an Erdogan, or a Putin. The Democrats have already folded over much worse, Trump versus the United States. The Democrats have already folded over on multiple occasions, actually. The last desperate argument is that equating the United States to Russia or to the Weimar Republic is a false equivalency. The United States has a venerated system of checks and balances and has survived a democracy as a democracy against all odds remember the civil war. And yet, tradition is no bulwark against usurpation and a hostile takeover. Institutions are malleable and only as good as the people who run them. Republican Rome has lasted twice as long as the United States. Its checks and balances were way more sophisticated. In some ways, the, Re the Roman Republic was more profoundly democratic than the United States. Yet, it had transitioned seamlessly, voluntarily, and abruptly into the rapacious and tyrannical Roman Empire. Here's a lesson to bear in mind.